Hey everyone, this is Mike from Oka Software. I'd like to give a quick walkthrough about how to set up Buto volumetric lighting and fog in your scene if you don't already have it set up. The first thing that you need to do is add Buto volumetric lighting and fog to your renderer asset, your universal renderer data. You can see I've already added it here, but if you haven't yet added it, you'll need to click add renderer feature and then add that to uh, your universal renderer data. The next thing you need to do is go and add in a Buto volumetric fog volume. You can do that by going to your volume selector and your rendering. Uh, in, you can do that by going to uh, you know your hierarchy, right clicking, going down to volume, and then selecting Buto fog volume. Then it'll create automatically sort of a new global volume, and you can just click new to add in a new uh, fog volume, and then clicking add override volumetrics, Buto volumetric fog, toggling it on. So you can see that we now have fog in the scene. That's pretty easy. And um, one thing to kind of watch out for is you can see as I raise the fog density quite high, the scene becomes black. That's because we have self-shadowing enabled. By disabling self-shadowing, you can see that the scene stays bright, but uh, the downside is that the fog no longer sort of shadows itself, which, which can add a nice level of realism into your scene. So. Um, we'll re-enable the self-shadowing. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that you can sort of help mitigate this challenge by keeping your attenuation boundary size quite low, and you can raise your fog density in that way. Now, you can see that the fog is affecting this scene here. Um, one thing that I like to do is uh, increasing the remapping, uh, the bottom side, so that the scene really shows off where the fog is present and where it's less present. You can also see these sort of god rays occurring around uh, some of the objects in our scene, like this box and like this uh, sphere. And these volumetric god rays rotate dynamically and respond dynamically as we move the directional light through the scene. Let's show that off really quickly. Really cool. And um, the other thing that you might want to do is you might want to add in um, a local fog volume in order to describe how the fog might look at a different location within your scene. So you can do that using box volumes. You'll just add that box volume or other local volume and then click add override volumetrics, Buto volumetric fog. And let's say that you want to have quite a low fog density. So we'll just set this to maybe 10 and we'll also bring this transform over and scale it up so we can go inside. So you can see here now the fog density is uh, reduced a lot when we go inside of this uh, density volume effectively. And this includes all of the different settings that you might want to access. And so you can completely customize different areas of the same scene with these different local volumes. I'll also quickly show how to use the Buto volumetric lights. So these lights, you need to go to light Buto light, and then it'll drag, sort of add this in. They automatically inherit the data from the light component in your scene. Um, you'll see that you might need to raise the intensity a little bit in order to see it. And then you'll uh, maybe change the color around in order to see it more clearly in your scene. So just bring this down again a little bit. And then you can see also that if you don't want it to inherit the data from the light component, you can change that by using this slider as well. So you can have basically like a, a red light with a green volumetric component to it. Not physically realistic, but it can yield some really interesting, cool results. Next thing I'll talk about is the density masks. So in order to add a density mask, you'll right click in your hierarchy, go to effects, and then Buto fog density mask. <clears throat> the fog density mask enables you to describe areas that are more or less foggy in your scene. This is really good for things like fog of war, um, you can see here that there are two blend modes, multiplicative and exclusive. Exclusive causes fog to render only within the confines of the fog density mask, and these are additive together. So basically, like if you want to have two different areas like this, you can have two different areas like that, and they'll um, kind of be combined naturally. So then the other option is multiplicative. So multiplicative will increase the density of the fog in that region or decrease the density of the fog in that region. So you can see here when I bring this down to zero, if I go inside, 
and bring us all the way up the fall off that there's no fog just in this region alone. Okay, so that's a highlight about setting up Buto uh, sort of from scratch in your scene. Just the quick highlights again, you need to make sure to add Buto's renderer feature into your universal renderer data. You need a fog volume in your scene that's enabled. You need to be careful about the attenuation boundary size as well as the self shadowing enabled settings and um, your fog density. So if you are having problems, your scene is super dark, something like this, um, that's something to consider. And then also have highlighted uh, the ability to customize that fog more with these fog density masks, as well as the fog Buto lights, the volumetric lights that we have available. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like and subscribe to my channel to help support my work. And I'll also include more details about how to get Buto, Buto uh, down in the description below. So thanks for watching. Uh, I appreciate your time and hope you have a great day.